Den årligt återkommande penningpolitiska konferensen i Jackson Hole börjar på torsdag. Ibland kallas den för centralbankirernas Woodstock och intresset är extra stort i år med hänvisning till Fed-chefen Jerome Powells tal på fredag. Med oss för att diskutera den här konferensen har vi Nikolaj Schmidt som är en global ekonom för T. Rowe Price. Baserad i Köpenhamn men vi tar det på engelska. Very nice to have you with us. Is this year's Jackson Hole conference hotter than ever, or am I just being an overexcited journalist here? Thank you so much for having me. Um, I am not sure it's more exciting, more more important or more exciting than ever. I do think uh, that we are a little bit excited to find out whether the Fed has seen enough progress or the FOMC has seen enough progress on inflation that they're about to kick off the interest rate easing cycle. So I think that's the big question for us, right? That's the big question. And this will be discussed, obviously, up until Friday afternoon, Swedish time, when, when, when the American chairman speaks. But this is also a, a pretty global affair. The central bankers from all over the world, including Sweden, and I presume your native Denmark as well. Any other speakers that you would like to single out, apart from the American central bankers? So I think Jay Powell is the most important of the speakers. Um, Bailey from the Bank of England, the central bank governor from the Bank of England is speaking as well. And Philip Lane, the chief economist at the ECB is also speaking at the conference. I think the, for the from a markets perspective, I think the last two are going to be more interesting in terms of context, because these are two economies where they've already started the interest rate easing cycle, right? So the big question is, what is Powell going to say? The big question is what Powell is going to, going, going to say, but but we're in a context, it's an interesting context where everybody is in the beginning of an easing, easing cycle and I guess they will be discussing this among themselves too. This is a series of speeches but also a series of interaction between central bankers. Any thought on that, on the soft topics that will be discussed? So, so I think, let me come at it from the markets perspective first. So I think the, the key thing that we at the markets care about is how much is the global economy slowing mm -hmm. and how concerned are central bankers about it, right? And if you go back, let's start out with Powell because he is the probably the most important of the speakers. So what did we get at the last FOMC? We had probably three things, very simplified, right? We had number one, the, the FOMC is the interest rate setting committee in, in America that meets every six weeks. So the first thing we had is some people were in favor of a, of a cut at the last meeting. The second thing we had from Powell's press conference was further um, moderation or softening of the labor market is not welcome. And the third thing we had is sort of a repeat of what they've said for a few months now, which is we need a little bit more confidence on inflation. So what has happened since? So we've had the big bout of volatility in the markets over the last sort of call it three weeks, which was kicked off by some softer data in America, in particular the payrolls data came softer. So that sort of speaks to the second point, softer payroll data was not welcome. I think on balance, they would say we got softer data. And the second thing we received is inflation data, which has been more encouraging, right? So the thing people in the markets will be looking for is whether um, Powell will, I think, stop referring to the sentence that a little bit more confidence about the trajectory of inflation is needed before they can start easing interest rates. Um, I think the way this is going to be teed up, I think, is that the interest rate easing cycle is about to start. I don't think Powell will tell us we're going to do 50, we're going to do 25. I think he will sort of portray a sense of calm, um, which is sort of what has come out of the Fed, because even at the height of the sort of volatility we had over the last sort of three weeks, right, uh, Merrick Daly was out and had a very calm approach to it. So that probably leaves the market with the impression that it's going to be a start of 25 basis points. And I think Powell will keep referring to the totality of the data. The Fed is data dependent. They will ease as much or as little as data allows them to do. So I think that's sort of the, the big picture, right? And that's the key, I think, conclusion from this meeting. So uh, 25 points in September is pretty much priced in. Remind me if I'm wrong here. If this changes, if the tonality changes on Friday, then markets will adjust appropriately. Could this be a big market mover, or do you, do you do you expect more of the same, more of the same communications like you just mentioned? I think the objective of Powell will be for this to not be a big market mover. So one way to approach any central bank is always to ask, what would they like to achieve? And if you can figure that out, then you have a decent chance of trying to figure out what they're actually going to say. So I think. The objective here is to, to 
not make the markets price 50 basis points and then aggressive cutting cycle because I don't think that's on the cards and that would really box the Fed in and, and create a lot of difficulties for them. On the flip side, the days has been a little softer. The labor market probably is a little bit softer. Inflation is down. You do not want to tighten financial conditions and coming out and hinting that you're going to do zero basis points cut in the next meeting definitely would tighten financial conditions. So I think the objective is to keep this middle of the road. Uh, how will the market respond to this? I think this will be very slightly uh, bearish. So, but but not uh, the objective is not to make markets move a lot on this conference. I think. I mean, we still have around three uh, percent of inflation in the U.S. It's not like in Sweden where we're hovering around two. The, there is an argument that you would need to stay restrictive. On the other hand, if you lower American interest rates with 25 basis points, you, you're still in restrictive th- territory. Do you have any thoughts on, uh, on, on the pace from this context? So, so I, as I said, I think the first cut will be 25. Um, I very much agree with you, and I think that's important. We're starting from a policy rate, which is five and three eighths in America. I think by any measure that is restrictive. I think if you look at the data that is sensitive to the interest rate policy cycle, it looks like monetary policy is indeed very restrictive, not just restrictive. And I think from my perspective, it means that you know you can probably have the Fed cut easily four times, and monetary policy will still be quite restrictive. So all that means that if the Fed waits until last minute by starting the cutting cycle, they're going to be caught way behind the curve. Mm. And this is the reason why they need to get moving today. And I think once you you can you can cut. You can cut the inflation data in many different ways. I would put inflation currently somewhat below the number you quoted. I would put a, probably put the run rate closer to two. Yeah. Um, the economy is losing some speed. Unemployment rate is going up. So I think these are encouraging signs if you're worried about inflation. Very good. Uh, one last concern. If you signal that you're going to ease in monetary conditions, that's an easing in itself. The market will expect more easing to come. It's hard to change the course without kind of acting stimulating just by the words, just by the thoughts of stimulating further down the road. Is this a difficult balance for, the, for, the, for Jerome Powell to, to navigate? I, th- I think you're completely right. And I think this has been a very difficult path for them to walk over the last sort of three, four months or something of that nature. If you think back to when the ECB did the first easing, so they, they managed to shift the markets from expecting, you know, you're going to get the first cut, and then you're going to get a whole sequence of cuts coming right after that by repeating that they were data dependent. And what happened was uh, interest rates actually didn't come off a whole lot as they cut. And financial conditions probably unbalanced, tightened a little bit. So it's all in terms of how you phrase the, how you phrase the communication. As you said yourself, right now the markets are expecting 25 basis points and a little bit above that at the next meeting. So if you're sort of guiding the markets in line with that and you preserve the idea that you are data depending and monitoring the totality of the data, I think you can sort of thread the needle and, and walk the balance and you won't sort of set off huge speculation that you know there's going to be another 100 basis points cut in the next sort of two months. Nicola Schmidt, this is a very interesting discussion. Thank you so much for joining me. I want to end it with a philosophical question, and this might be a tricky one. Is this a good spot? Is Jackson Hole a, a rural, beautiful area in the middle of, middle of America? Is this a good tactical time for the Federal Reserve to communicate with markets? I as well, the calendar of the conference is not set to the current point in history, right? This is a long running conference. It's a beautiful setting and it takes people away from the screens, etc. So in that sense, it gives people a break to think about bigger picture things. And, and if you step back for a minute, we in the markets are very excited about this conference and there has been big things announced at it. But really, there's a lot of academic papers and these are deeper, often deeper academic discussions taking place. And it's not about are we going to cut 25 next meeting or not. That's also in the markets getting excited about, about that. I think central bank are sort of a, a, a thinking bigger picture in these conferences. Nicola Schmidt with Tiro Price, thank you so much for joining us today. Very interesting and we all look forward to the, the conference coming up. Men det säger vi stort tack också till ni som tittat. Vi ses snart igen.